we have made it. We've made it, family, to fall 2020. Who would have thought? I know, the last eight months have felt like maybe the longest decade of all time. And at this point, 2019 feels like this uh, distant, dated, historical era that we can only vaguely remember. And I know many of us are probably upset and frustrated at the circumstances that we need to go back to school with. But just think about all of the new opportunities that you might have to bring to your college experience because of this new normal, right? So if you're bored in class, you can help your professor become famous and help them trend on TikTok or Instagram Reels by secretly remixing their teaching performance, right? Or you can make edits to your NBA 2K player during lectures, hashtag Mamba forever. Or you can use all of that extra time that you would be commuting to school. You can pick up an instrument like piano or violin, or you can read the rest of that book that you haven't read over the summer. And if you're looking for comfort this semester, well, this is the semester for you, right? You can dress up from the waist up so that you can be professional-ish for Zoom, but still have your pajamas down because you know that you just got out of bed right before the Zoom started. Now, in all serious, I know many of us are probably coming in with tons of questions this semester. And regardless of the questions that you're coming in with, we hope that you can meet an InterVarsity community wherever you are that can help explore those questions with you. Maybe questions like, how do you meet friends in this digital era that we're in? How do you grow in your faith when you're not physically connected to a community? How do you make a difference in the times that we live in? I wanna say that I think that if you find an InterVarsity community to wrestle with those questions, you might be able to find some answers too. I remember being a college student at the City College of New York, and it was the InterVarsity community that taught me how to increase my prayer life, that taught me how to give Lordship to Jesus uh, over everything in my life, not just the things that I wanted. And, and it was in a varsity where I've met some of my closest friends that even to this day, keep me accountable in my faith and help me grow to be uh, the, the man of God that I am today. It's, it's friends like Doug and Ashers who eventually we even became uh, groomsmen in each other's wedding. That, it, that community, that, that tight knit community that helps me meet Jesus in every area of my life, even the darkest ones. We really hope that this semester, you get to meet a community like that. That even if places in your life feel a little dark, you might have community to help guide you to the light. There, there's such an opportunity this year, this season. There's such an opportunity. In, in the past uh, eight months, it, I know it might've been filled with a lot of mourning and a, a lot of death, maybe literally and, and metaphorically. But isn't it true that when we're faced with mourning and death, there's a need for something to be revived. Maybe it's true that God is wanting to use the morning of the season to bring us a revived life. And so the, the invitation is to not enter into the season wishing for the good old days, no, but it's actually looking at the present moment to do good. Micah 6 says it this way, that our actions should be to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly. And what if those actions actually led us to a place of revived life in a year that has brought us so much to more? And what if those actions not only led us to places of revived life, but what if it led others to places of revived life? Yes, I do think it's possible to reach the campus even in a season where we can't enter the campus. And so we want you to know this semester, we're here for you, standing alongside you, longing for revival with you. And, and in this episode, in, in this episode today, we have tons of videos and interviews and even a spoken word that we hope encourages you and invites you into what God is doing in this season to know that you are not alone, but we're here with you. And so please, before we continue, could you do something for us? 
Uh, we'd love for you to fill out a contact card to let us know who you are. You can find that at innovarsity.org slash sign up. We can't wait to meet you and connect you with a community so that we can long for revival together. I love InnoVarsity for so many reasons, but, but one of the reasons is because we are a community that responds to God's love, grace, and truth. Because we respond to God's love, grace, and truth, that's the reason why we act justly and love mercy and walk humbly. It's because all of who we are and how we live is in response to a God that has given us so much. And not only do we respond to God's love, grace, and truth, but we respond to God's love, grace, and truth in a very specific way. We establish and we advance witnessing communities, communities that don't just point us inwardly, but point us outwardly to tell the good news of Jesus to all that are around us through our word and through our deed. And, and that's the reason why I think it's so important to get connected to community to get connected to people that can help point us to Jesus along the way. And so coming up next, we actually asked students and alumni about their experience in university and in college and how some of these things were at play for them in responding to God's love, grace, and truth, and in being a part of a witnessing community. And I'm so excited that we get to learn from them and hear from their experience. I found myself drifting further and further away from Christ when I began my college experience. I was trying to understand what faith meant for me personally. I found this much better um, when I was introduced to the InterVarsity group on my campus. As I got to know them better, I began to reacquaint myself with Jesus and he was so actively working with me while I was in college. He revealed himself to me in ways I had never imagined. I was able to really find freedom from a lot of shame and doubt that I was experiencing in my own you know, self-image and, and worth. I've been able to have multiple conversations with different friends and roommates about him in times and places that I never would have expected. I was able to receive guidance through a difficult transition of major and escaping harmful relationships and work environments. Through prayer with other believers and interacting with my fellow Ivy students through small group, I've been able to grow in relationship with them and in relationship with God as I leaned on Him for strength, peace, and deliverance. I grew in my personal faith. I grew in my friendships and I grew as a leader. It is when I'm creating poetic, musical, theatrical, and visual arts that I really feel like God is connecting with me and directing me and showing me meaning behind the pieces that I'm creating. All of this with me. I felt God calling me to become a small group leader. So me and my co started a freshman guys small group. And in that small group, I was able to see this group of random freshman guys who didn't know each other at all before it. But by the end of this year, they become so emotionally vulnerable and accountable to each other in a way that only God can do it. When I think that I'm hopeless, that there's no hope left, there's always God's voice, there's always Jesus walking with me telling me, no, there is hope. By having a real relationship with God during college, this really difficult time in my life, uh, I was able to finally understand the calling of deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. InnoVarsity friends have made such a difference in my life. These are the first friends that I could actually be emotionally vulnerable with and care for them. I could know them and be truly known by them. Whenever one of us is, you know, really in a place of darkness or 
needs help with something, like we're there, we're there. But also when something great happens to them, when there's a ton of like good news or something to celebrate, like they're also the first people that I want to celebrate with. People um, I know from university, uh, they make me, they keep me accountable to my actions and they check up on me, you know how I'm doing. I feel like that has impacted my life so much and made me a better person. I feel like there's a deeper level of trust there in that we both are trying to understand our own spiritual journeys and um, that helps us to come together and, and learn from one another and help each other out. This is the first time that I've actually explored my ethnic identity. Uh, we've created a space where we can and where we do talk about race and inequality and the things that are happening in other countries and what that means in our own personal life. It is much easier for me to make friends in a campus Bible study group because people here show care and Jesus' love to another. I've been able to go deeper in conversations than I would be with other friends. We've been able to talk about faith, about struggling with sin, about the tough things about walking with Jesus. The friends that I made in my final year of college uh, challenged me uh, to grow in my spiritual development. And without this, I wouldn't be in church leadership today as an alumni. My inner varsity friends, I love them so much. I don't think I fully understand God. I don't think I fully know what he's capable of, but I have gotten some glimpse of, of what he's capable of doing in someone's life, like mine. When I came into college, I knew like general stuff about the Bible, but I really never dug deep into the passage until my freshman year. It's different than growing in like your own church community because like I grew up with my church family, but to be in a place where I haven't known these people for so long yet, they still love me like they're my own or like we're like all family. Then we understand that the job of the Christian is to go as an agent of the kingdom of God to preach liberty and justice to the captives, to set at liberty those that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The killings of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and many others have made the world confront the reality that we had already been living in a pandemic. They're so passionate to follow Jesus and they live that out both in their classes and on mission, like on campus. If you guys just want us to pray for you guys, you know, we're here for you guys. We're, we're trying to build a community and we're just trying to make you guys part of the family. Once we started having those conversations about Jesus, people started responding in a way that they were thinking more and they were contemplating, yeah, who really is Jesus and who is Jesus to me? We want to see God and His Spirit break out on every corner of every campus. Isn't that what we want? When you see Jesus for who He is, it changes everything. When you see Jesus for who He is, nothing else is the same. We have a special interview for you. Uh, we're going to be interviewing a senior at Stanford. Her name is Abby. We're so happy to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. So, so let's kick things off. I, I'd love to hear. Um, so th there's a narrative. Let's be honest, right? There's a narrative that happens in college uh, where folks come on college, come to college, and they just want to kind of get through it. They want to graduate, mm -hmm. and then all of the like world changing stuff, the help the world stuff that can happen afterwards. Mm -hmm. That's not been your story at all. So, could you tell us a little bit about why shouldn't 
folks wait? Like why, why start here? Why start now? Yeah, I think my experience in college has taught me that if I'm seeking to live out my faith, to live out justice and following Jesus on my campus, it has mm. to start now. It's inseparable from following Jesus. Mm. And also learning about the context that we're in is really important to recognize that universities are not this little bubble that exists in perfect harmony and justice and right relationship, but that and the injustices of the world are just out there, but rather that in many ways, all the injustices of the world are reproduced on universities in mm. smaller or sometimes even more intense ways because they're privatized and all that good stuff. But, but let's be honest, Abby, right? A lot of the times when we try to get people involved in justice, there's always this hesitancy. I remember a couple months ago, even for me, as I was trying to get churches in my area rally around uh, doing a protest after George Floyd got murdered, th there was just this uh, kind of wall in the beginning before we had the momentum and uh, the hype around the event. There was just like this stoppage of people who didn't know if they wanted to engage or not. And so from your experience, as you've tried to navigate that as well, why, why do you think it's hard for some folks? Why is it hard for some people uh, to show up or to take action. Yeah, I've definitely experienced that as well. I think a lot of people fall in this camp of not seeing how showing up, being one person at a protest or action will actually affect justice. And mm. in our culture, we so want to see, right? We do a, a cause and effect. We do this thing and it leads to productivity and you can see the chain of events and you feel like you've had an impact. Yeah. Um, but that's, not what happens often in <laughs> the world period. And so recognizing, submitting to God that it's a faithful act of mm -hmm. small steps often. Um, and I think the other side of it is being hopeless. You're like, yeah. what are we gonna do? It's such a big issue. And when we see each other, when we see ourselves as just one person, we forget that God is bigger than any injustice, right? Mm -hmm. And that we're in a community. And so there's a lot of barriers that I think people have. How do you help folks get over those humps if that's really the thing that's stopping them? Yeah, the first thing I would say is to do it communally. And mm -hmm. in my experience, it's all better in community to be open about the things that are awkward or weird or uncomfortable. Uh, this summer, as we're separated as a community, we're doing community online. Mm -hmm. We've been wrestling with this question of how to do justice, right? And it's easy just to be on social media and scroll or repost without actually doing the calls to lawmakers or doing the um, anything. So we've started having Zoom calls where we would phone bank together. So we'd have we'd work together on a script and talk and pray about how we can use our positionality as Christians and as mm -hmm. college students to, to affect change in these issues. And then even just having the Zoom screen, everyone muted on the phone together has been powerful because it's really hard and weird and awkward sometimes to do it on your own. Yeah. And that's not an excuse not to, but it's much better in community to overcome those barriers and to help people who would otherwise not um, to actually do something. What, what advice, what encouragement would you give to other students like you that are trying to engage in justice issues or engage in campus issues this semester, uh, but intimidated by the fact that everything feels uncertain? Uh, how would you encourage them to continue to remain faithful in this season? Yeah, I think the first thing I would say is to start small. It's choosing into little inconveniences and little acts of putting other people above your own things to choose to go to an action or to go to a teach-in and learn these things rather than perfect my paper for the 10th time, you know? Um, and that even is just a work in our own selves to decenter academia and all the strivings for success we want. Um, and also to recognize that it's a big question of how to engage in justice. The question of yeah. how to do justice and love mercy and walk humbly, that's the gospel. Is It's seeking out right relationships, us with God, us with each other, us and ourselves, us with the land, 
collectively and individually, that's mm. a big thing. And so to to not put pressure on themselves to try to figure it out all right away, because it's a lifelong journey to just be faithful in the small things and to do it in community as as you come across barriers to turn to other people for encouragement and wisdom that they have along the way, I think would be what I would say. That is beautifully said, Abby. Uh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm blessed by hearing your story. I hope that uh, Jesus continues to meet you as you remain faithful to him in the season. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. So many of us are hurting all over the world and we are in need of a touch of love. So would you commit to being a listening ear and a caring heart? Love is calling out to everyone here in this place. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath. What's the state of our country's campuses? Can I state that our country is damaged and in need of some help? Yeah. Can, can I say that the reality of universities in our cities is not pretty? Well, that's sad, because the truth is we have the whole universe in our cities. Right. See, the problem is I see too many Kanye Wests in college. Wait, what are you bugging? Let me explain. I'm just saying everyone follows the same program. Okay. We believe Jesus walks when we made it through the wire, but our faith all falls down when we experience them slow jams. And mm. so then we put our hope in success, thinking one day we'll touch the sky, but right. success makes everyone around you look like a gold digger, so you don't trust you high. Uh-uh, I can't tell you nothing. Right, because you don't want the good life to pass you, right? But Christ, is trying to get your attention like a flash and light will always win because your beautiful, dark, twisted fantasy can't comprehend light. So you can wait on God, try to run your own life. And you'll be mad you waited because Jesus has the power to find a college dropout and take them all the way to graduation. See, to get to college, you got to go through admission. Right, but what if students didn't leave college unless they chose to admission? Add See, what would it look like if we raised an army for the mission and not an army that goes missing every time we go fishing? Like, I want to see people accept Jesus. Well, shoot, that's what I want too. So in addition to trying to graduate with honors, you know, magna summa cum laude, we honor God shouting, Maranatha. Lauda come soon. So bust out your art utensils, because I'm about to paint a portrait with no stencils. For we are instruments. Simply pencils in the hands of God, portraying his massive plan on the easel at hand, you see. Mm. The canvas is the campus, a blank slate to demonstrate God's great love for people. Mm. And every brush stroke is dipped in the hope found in Christ, mm. engraving images of redemption in the hearts that the potter molds. So let me draw your attention to the admission process on our campuses. That's right, we said admission. For we are textbook renting, coffee addicted missionaries to a certain degree associates in the kingdom of God, earning our bachelors and doctorates to bring glory to the masters. And every credit gain is credit towards the Father. So as you swipe that credit card at Bursars, hoping to pay off tuition? Here's tuition that more students would apply to the mission. And there isn't a loan to pay off at the end of our semester. For no student is alone with our wealthy investor. So let us tell you why you should add mission. Because your application fee has already been covered. Yeah. <laughs> Applications for the kingdom issued by the Father. Letters of approval sealed in the blood of Jesus. References in submission to the Holy Spirit. You were accepted before you even applied. Mm. Besides, what's an application without the application of our faith and the implication of our actions? For we are missing an action if the action is missing. So we say lights, camera, action. Because that's our triune nature, right? We are light of this world, snapshots made in the image of God, called to direct, 
action. So welcome to Campus.